Hey. All right. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Uh, just picking me up. You guys hear me okay? Great. Uh, so hi, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, so early in the day. And uh, have the dubious honor of going first and uh, sort of trying to set the tone for today. Um, but I really appreciate everybody coming out to listen to what Uh, products and, and working with Citrine. Um, yeah, looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow, hopefully doing some demos. Yep. Thanks. So a little bit about S44, uh, in case you haven't heard of us in the past. Uh, we are a custom software company with a virtual first cross-functional team located primarily across the U.S. and Germany. Uh, we specialize in creating bespoke digital experiences to tackle uh, unique needs for our clients. S44 has been operating in the automotive space for a little over 10 years, and we've worked in the EV industry uh, specifically for a significant portion of that time. Uh, previously, we've helped shepherd a nationwide charging network from an off-the-shelf solution to a custom one, and that included a custom CPO, MSP, and NOC software, as well as OEM bridges. And we took their average App Store rating from about a 1.5 star to about a 4.5. Um, if you've been, if you drive an EV or you've been involved uh, in the EV industry uh, within North America, you've probably touched our technology at some point, even if you're not aware that you were doing so. Um, most recently, we uh, authored uh, the Citrino S project, was, which was uh, accepted as an LF Energy project uh, for a open source CSMS uh, supporting the OCPP 2.0.1 standard. Um, so this is our most recent effort. We've been at it for uh, not quite a year, uh, but it's come, uh, it's come very far, and I'm excited to show you what we have and talk a little bit about why we're doing what we're doing and where we're going uh, moving forward. So, wow, I got much louder. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so um, the main focus of building Citrine, uh, Citrine OS was to build something open source that could help drive, uh, drive electrification toward taking on the OCPP 2.0.1 standard. We feel very strongly that a move toward 2.0.1 is important for the industry, both in terms of collaboration between uh, various stakeholders, including hardware makers, uh, OEMs, uh, mobile app developers, even down to payment processors. We think this is a very important uh, step that the industry needs to take in order to move forward uh, properly. Uh, there's a lot of issues sort of with OCPP 1.6, which is obviously what the industry focuses on right now, uh, that we think are holding back um, adoption and, uh, and improvement of, uh, of end user experiences. Uh, Probably I'm preaching to the choir here. I think a lot of people here are already aware of the differences between the standards, but just as a quick overview, um, a few things you could do with uh, OCPP 2.0.1 that you might not be able to do as easily with 1.6. Um, screen and UI control for your charger uh, exists, 
question mark uh, with OCPP 1.6, maybe not that great. Uh, like many portions of that current standard, uh, it requires overloading methods that were not well defined and everybody kind of did their own thing. If you want to control charger A from software system B, software system B better know what charger A is expecting because it's not defined properly by, by the OCPP standard. Um, having greater screen and UI control is of interest for charge point operators. Um, things like providing advertising, of course, uh, is something that comes to most people's mind, but also um, quality of life uh, improvements, things like um, uh, working with 7-Eleven and having, um, having chargers in their parking lot and, hey, while you're charging, while you wait for your fast charger 15, 20 minutes, why don't you come in and get a free coffee on us? Um, surveys uh, maybe served on the screen, hey, one to five, how clean is the parking lot? How, like, did you have any problems with your charging experience today? Can let, uh, can let your operations center know basically right away, hey, I need to dispatch someone, uh, something needs attention. Um, OCPP 1.6 also didn't provide great messaging uh, capability between, uh, between your CPO and your charger, uh, and it made it, that created a lot of problems when it came to uh, configuration and updates. Um, we've worked with a large number of different uh, charging hardware manufacturers and have navigated a lot of challenges when it comes to making sure that the CPO and the OEM software and the charger all talk to each other properly. One of the problems that we've noticed with a lot of, uh, uh, when working with a lot of chargers is that updating a single configuration point requires uh, replacing an entire configuration profile. If you just wanna change one setting, you may have to take the charger offline and completely replace you know, a full JSON with every setting. Um, 2.0.1 provides a lot uh, more granular control. If you want to change the fan speed on the motherboard, you can do that easily with a, with a, sim a simple setting adjustment. Turn on and off the network card. Very, uh, very specific things that allow, uh, allow repairs and enhancements to happen uh, quickly and with a minimum of downtime. And finally, uh, and this is, I think, what is every on everybody's mind when they think about OCPP 2.0.1 uh, plug and charge, as was alluded to in the previous, uh, the previous presentation. Um, OCPP 1.6, not great security, uh, and that has led to a situation where charging can be a hassle. Um, a lot of EV drivers I know are juggling a bunch of different apps um, on their phone. I know one person uh, who I just talked to this weekend, Genesis driver, who has a screen on their Android phone that is all charging apps. Um, it's five, I think, and that's, that's a lot. Um, he was sort of opining about the difficulty in getting a charging session started, and obviously plug-in charge is the dream, right? You drive in, you plug in, you start going. And uh, OCPP uh, 2.0.1's better security, certificate handling, allows identification, and it's what facilitates that sort of technology. Now, obviously, I'm sort of just evangelizing the, uh, <laughs> the um, protocol here, but uh, it's really important to understand that that was a driving factor of us sort of creating this project. So why do we choose to go open source? Obviously, there's a lot of uh, industry reasons and um, enterprise reasons that you could choose to go open source, and I've got a few of them bullet pointed here. But really, the, the main impetus behind our open source choice was we felt strongly that the industry needs to move uh, out of their silos in order to, to uh, you know, drive adoption and drive innovation for, uh, for EV drivers and users. Um, I, I've kind of spoken about this a little bit, but in addition to us working with a, a number of different charging hardware manufacturers, we've also worked with, uh, how many on the big project? It was eight OEMs, six OEMs, something like that. That's something in that line. Um, and again, everyone's sort of doing their own thing. Um, by bringing forth an open source project, we want to get everybody on the same page. We want to get people collaborating, moving forward, and get people excited about, uh, about making charging better. So this is a little bit about what I was talking about here, but just a, a few quick overviews of what we've talked about so far. Citrine's aim is to eliminate barriers to operating charging networks and to break, uh, to break various stakeholders out of silos built on the OCPP 2.0.1 protocol. In a minute, we're gonna go ahead and talk about, uh, about some of the features of this, which is that it's a modular API-based platform, and we'll talk about some of, uh, 
some of the modules and features we have planned. So Citrine OS, what is it? This is our open source uh, OCPP 2.0.1 compliant CSMS. And here's uh, just a, uh, a little bit about it. Uh, this is written in TypeScript, and uh, frequently we are asked why TypeScript. And the answer again was we are looking to drive adoption and collaboration. If you take a look uh, at GitHub's analytics, JavaScript and TypeScript are some of the most known, most used languages. We wanted to lower the barrier as much as possible. If you want to get involved with Citrine OS, if you've never worked on a charging solution before, but you're interested in EVs, we want you to be able to download the code, read it, and start opening PRs right away. Um, and as far as Node.js goes, we actually did just recently uh, register our dependencies in uh, NPM, the Node Package Manager, which has made things uh, even easier. Uh, Citrine OS is API-based with a modular inf uh, architecture. Uh, it's designed to fit into a number of different situations without having to completely replace them, and it's extensible uh, for adding newer features or building things that we wouldn't have even thought of. Currently, uh, Citrine does pass the OCTT core and advanced security tests, and we are pursuing OCA certification um, actively, uh, working with the OCA. Actually, had an email from them this morning. Uh, the reason we aren't uh, certified yet is because uh, sort of no one's ever done what Citrine's doing exactly before. If you've taken a look at the OCTT testing tool the suite or uh, the, or, or the uh, standards for certification, a lot of it is based around the UI, the GUI, and like how, how easy it is to use. Uh, there's not a lot, there's not a lot um, set up for handling something that's API-based like Citrine is. So we are in talks to, uh, to find a way to help them update their testing uh, so that uh, a project like this can be certified, and they are passionate and interested about in helping us do that. Uh, Citrine is under the Apache 2.0 license, which is one of the more permissive open source license for people interested in open, uh, open software here. Uh, it does give users permission to reuse code for nearly any purpose, and that does include using code as part of uh, proprietary projects. And finally, we are a Linux Foundation Energy Project. And we've been working with the LFE for, uh, I think, about six months now. Um, Citrine was designed to be adaptable. Like I alluded to a little earlier, uh, we don't want you to have to replace what's working for you, and we don't, we're not trying to be an out-of-the-box, one-size-fits-all solution. We want Citrine to fit in to, uh, to your users' needs, and uh, we want you to be able to create what you need. The default modules include configuration, cer certificates, EV driver monitoring, et cetera. These are all OCPP requirements, but third-party modules can also be created with support for advanced features. Uh, our first thir third-party module was created by Stackbox, which is a payment module which allows for, um, for Citrine to take payment via Stripe. They were one of our first contributors, uh, opened one of our earliest PRs, and they've recently agreed to, uh, to assist us with open sourcing a little bit more of, uh, of their payment solution as well. And Citrine is API-based uh, for ease of integration into existing backends. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the architecture uh, coming up here. So here is uh, just a quick look at how the system architecture is structured. Um, our central system here uh, maintains the WebSocket connection to the chargers, and it places messages onto a message broker. Um, Options for the message broker itself are pretty open. We have support for MQTT via RabbitMQ. That's in the code base. We also have uh, Kafka and Google PubSub uh, working. Messages from the message broker are then consumed, uh, consumed by a number of different modules, uh, as discussed, which is where Citrine OS's extensibility really starts to shine. Uh, there's modules to handle the different portions of the OCP protocol, uh, modules for extensible features, and your own modules can be created. As you'll see in a, in a little bit, there's also the possibility to not use modules, and we'll talk about that. And that was something uh, new that we uh, sort of uh, have spearheaded in the last few months. Um, in addition, there's, uh, the architecture also includes a common memory cache and a relational database, which in this case is a SQL instance. 
And on top of the SQL instance, we've added a Directus UI. Uh, if you're not familiar with Directus, uh, Directus is a free and open source data platform that's built entirely in JavaScript, and it wraps SQL DBs up in a uh, configurable GUI. So we utilize Directus as a simple, open UI platform that anybody can easily and quickly spin up and customize to build new user flows uh, for particular use cases. So, for anyone who's attended our previous talks, uh, we were at uh, we were at Plugfest in uh, in Germany and also in DC. We've uh, we've hosted one technical steering committee meeting and two webinars. So if you've joined any of those, um, a lot of what I've said, or even if you've just checked out Citrine on GitHub, I guess, a lot of what I've said is probably pretty familiar, um, and it's not necessarily new. So let me focus a little bit on what we've learned and how we've adapted since our 1.0 release in January. Um, in the past six months, as we've uh, been attending these, uh, these um, events and getting to talk to a lot of, uh, a lot of people within the uh, open software community when it comes to electrification, uh, one common theme that kind of arose in a lot of these conversations is this. WebSockets, kind of a solved problem. Uh, frequently, people who are already uh, handling EV charging, they've got an established API gateway, or they've got some sort of handler for their WebSocket traffic, and generally a replacement is not what they're looking for. So following on for that, from that feedback, we looked for a way to make Citrine OS more adaptable and help it fit into other architectures. Uh, we did this by refactoring the central system, and essentially we abstracted out the WebSocket handling into its own module. Uh, this gives us the opportunity to take in messages via other, uh, other methods like, um, like REST endpoints or gRPC. Uh, the goal here is we want to allow Citrine really to fit in to any existing architecture like a puzzle piece instead of as a replacement. So if, if someone is already using 1.6 and they, they're saying, hey, you know, most of the hardware that's out there is 1.6, most of the industry is using 1.6. I can't just throw that out and go to, and go to 2.0 right now. Um, we, want, we don't want you to have to do that. So if you're already doing a good job of handling 1.6 traffic, then keep that. But go ahead and you know, fit Citrine OS in alongside it and let it do the heavy lifting of the 2.0.1 traffic and just, if you don't want to use the WebSocket uh, uh, module, just don't use it. Uh, another lesson we learned was that there's a, a big appetite in the community for a testing CSMS. Um, Everest, as has been mentioned a couple times today already, is an excellent testing tool when it comes to, uh, to, to needing a virtual charger. Um, and it's been immensely helpful with us in testing Citrine. Uh, being able to connect to a charger without needing actual charging hardware uh, is excellent but there's not really a great testing tool for the other end. So we want Citrine, when we were finding that people were using Citrine that way already via things like postman collections, or literally one person was uh, copy and pasting <laughs> directly into the terminal uh, for, for their testing. So we wanted to sort of uh, lean into that and emphasize the way that we could help with that niche. So uh, we went ahead and added some uh, API flows to the Directus UI uh, that allow you to trigger some of these common testing features uh, directly from the, from, from, uh, the GUI. And uh, actually, I have a little video right here. So in this one, this was a demo of, uh, of a button that we created just to uh, be able to reset a charger. You see, you scroll down to the reset button. I'm gonna pause that. When it clicks the reset, it asks for the Citrine OS URL, which is uh, saved in the, in the DB, and also a tenant ID. Go ahead and have them fill that out. So once, uh, once you've got your CSMS selected and you've got your proper charger selected, you can just click this button here and it fills out a sort of template flow. Obviously this one's super simple, it's just a reset command, but we have this for a large number of common testing features. Uh, and before you send the payload, you can easily edit it, but it just makes things a little bit simpler rather than typing the same thing over and over again if all you're doing is testing. So uh, our most recent release uh, took place on April 5th. That was the 1.1.0 release. Uh, we have had a small hotfix since then, but uh, it's 
and you're welcome to re read the release notes, but it's really not that fascinating. Uh, the 1.1 release uh, was a big one, though. Uh, in this, we added support for advanced device management and advanced UI certification profiles, which are both required for 2.0.1 uh, compliance. We create a new location data model that supports geolocation and device status, and uh, that third bullet, bullet point, the direct disclosure, kind of what we just went over uh, in the previous slide. Uh, we refactored the central system to support alternative uh, architectures, so that was what I was talking about, abstracting out the WebSocket module so that it's easier to, uh, to fit in Citrine without needing to sort of throw the baby out with the bathwater. And additionally, we also added an in-memory option for the message bus, and we refactored uh, the project to be an NPM workspace and published the dependencies to uh, the Node Package Manager registry. Looking ahead, so that was 1.1. 1.2 is up next, and we're expecting to have 1.2 out um, pretty soon, before the end of the month. Um, 1.2 is uh, going to bring with it ISO 15118 support uh, and improved certificate handling. You'll be able to configure which certificate authority to use, and we're also going to have uh, direct disclose uh, within the UI for storing and refreshing certificates. 1.3, uh, has altered um, if you've been to our previous talks. Um, originally, we were not planning to support uh, OCPI until after uh, we had full OCPP 2.0.1 compliance implemented, uh, which is not coming until summer. But we have heard over and over that there's an appetite for, uh, for um, OCPI uh, support sooner than that. Uh, because of the need for roaming, particularly in Europe. So we are focusing OCPI support a little bit sooner and are expecting to have that out in June uh, with multi-tenant CPO support being a priority. And here's a kind of an overview of what the whole project has looked like. We did release our very first uh, commit to the, to the repo back in October of last year with our 1.0 release coming in January. Um, and in addition to, uh, to the OCPI support in June, we're also expecting to uh, have smart charging and scan and charge. If you're not familiar with scan and charge, because I think it's not as popular as plug and charge, not as talked about, uh, that's basically a situation where uh, for non-plug and charge scenarios, you can display a QR code on the charger, scan the QR code and start a charging session that way. In July, we do expect to have our full OCPP 2.0.1 release, uh, which will be the end of the current roadmap. It will then, we will have, um, we will have achieved the promise of, of what we want Citrine to be. Uh, after that, the roadmap is pretty much wide open. We are, uh, we have a lot of ideas, a lot of ambitions, and we would definitely welcome uh, input from the community. We're expecting to have, we haven't announced a date yet, so I'm not gonna say anything and like, and, uh, and uh, make anyone angry at me within my, within my uh, organization, but we do plan to have another technical steering committee meeting soon. If you didn't attend our previous one, or even if you did, we'd love to have you there. Uh, we'd love to facilitate conversation on where you think a project like this should go. After OCPP 2.0.1, what do you think are the important factors? Where should we be aiming? So, uh, just going over a little bit about what we talked about today. Uh, Citrine OS, again, I've, I've said 2.0.1 about a million times today, but it's an OCPP 2.0.1 compliant open source CSMS that makes it easy to transition from 1.6 to 2.0.1 compliance. Uh, now with our, with our new features, it's easier to use it to test uh, 2.0.1 chargers, build new backends and fit into existing ones. And uh, we do have uh, features, uh, support for many of the features of OCPP 2.0.1 with full compliance coming in July. Uh, if you are interested in Citrine, um, we definitely want to hear from you. And I hope you've enjoyed learning about it today and uh, hearing about the progress that we've had over the last few months. It really is our sincere hope that Citrine uh, can inspire excitement, innovation, and collaboration within the industry. 
Um, I'm going to open for questions, but just as a closing word, let me just say that if you'd like to get involved at all, we welcome suggestions, discussion, collaboration. Uh, the QR code here will put you in touch with Jason Cardozzi, who's the person at S44 that's best uh, positioned to be able to facilitate conversations with the right people. He can put you in touch with our head of open source. He can put you in touch with our lead devs, our architecture uh, people, whoever you need to talk to. Um, and our GitHub page, um, which is linked here, uh, does also have a link to our Discord community. We'd love to have you join that. Uh, our Discord community has been growing um, and becoming more active. Pretty, we're seeing questions now pretty much every day, which is excellent. Um, we'd love for you to come there, join the conversation, um, open PRs, or even just ask questions. Uh, we just want to connect and, and see what people have to say. So uh, thanks so much, and uh, appreciate you guys all taking the time to listen. And if you have questions, I'll do my best to answer. Yeah, please. Uh, not that we're aware of. Uh, we have quite a few. We have quite a few forks um, and some active, uh, actively forked uh, uh, repos, but we're not aware of anything using it in production at the moment. Yes, sir. It's a good question, and I'm going to be honest that I, I don't have a huge amount of knowledge about, about that uh, portion of the industry. We did talk to, um, to uh, a leader, I suppose, of another open source project in, uh, in the UK who, was inter who focuses entirely on home chargers and who was interested in Citrine for that purpose. Uh, his project involved... Um, involved providing the ability for people with home chargers to sort of uh, make their chargers available for, uh, for the public while they weren't using them. So in that particular situation, that's one situation in which uh, he, was, he was interested. Um, beyond that, I'm not sure how necessarily relevant it would be, but I do think, um, I do think even from a security standpoint, uh, OCPP 2.0.1 is, is useful for home users uh, just for that reason, if, if nothing else. And if you do want to hear more about that or if you have follow-up questions, uh, my director of open source, who would have loved to be here, but I'm, I'm unfortunately a, a poor replacement for her, but she was at the uh, American Center of, uh, for Mobility uh, last week in Detroit. We didn't want to make her fly twice. Um, she, would be, I, she would love to geek out about that stuff. So if you want to join the Discord, uh, her name is Thana. She's an admin there. She'd be more than happy to, to continue that conversation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I am I'm familiar with Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I sh should have done that with the previous one, sorry. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So the first question was about how reliant is Citrine on cloud on cloud architecture, is that right? So it's not particularly reliant on cloud architecture at all. You can kind of deploy it and install it wherever you'd like. Uh, we have installed it uh, in an AWS in instance and also in Kubernetes. Uh, there is a Docker image available for it that you can use to uh, deploy it where you'd like. Um, we have uh, sort of within the organization, we've laid out different ways uh, in which Citrine might be used and uh, we've considered sort of uh, a SaaS offering or uh, helping people uh, deploy their own sort of a SaaS instance. It really is very um, extensible and modular in that way. So there's no, there's no particular uh, architecture that it relies on. Uh, your other question was about, was that question, were you specifically talking about collaborating with, collaborating with open ADR and ADR systems specifically? Okay. So your other question was about how we collaborate with open ADR, which the truth is at the moment we don't, but I can tell you that uh, sort of uh, power and grid management and demand management systems and open ADR specifically is currently at the top of our list for post-July. 
Um, and that's the sort of thing where we're, um, we're not focusing it yet, but in our sort of whiteboard of where do we go from here, it's near the top. And definitely if there's, a, if there's an appetite for that, and we hear that from the community, I think, I think that's something we're very interested in moving forward with. Yes. Yeah, I Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So the first question, we back up here. The first question was how big of a focus has device management been? Is that right? Device modeling. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I'm a little outside my realm here because I haven't. Uh, I don't work daily in the code base, but uh, I know that the device model has been um, has been a topic of conversation that comes up in almost every standup. Unfortunately, I'm not. I'm not going to try to um, to spitball and get things wrong, but um, I'm happy to put you in touch with uh, with any of the devs within my org as far as that goes. Um, regarding uh, the other question, which was uh, how likely are we to move forward with uh, with working with um, working with ADR and demand management, right? Um, no. no, sorry, did I misunderstand? Well, ADR is a source Okay. Okay, yeah, it's over my head, unfortunately. Oh. So <laughs> I'll have to. Um, I'm certain that uh, that that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, find me during any coffee break. I maybe put you on in, a, in touch with Ben or Christian today, um, both of whom are like swim in those waters on a daily basis. Sir. Yeah, and that's what That's fair. Um, so the question here was uh, ISO 15118 is a huge specification. We obviously listed just that on the roadmap. What portion of that are we focusing? Fair, right? Um, I I think at this point our major focus, and I don't uh, I don't I haven't touched the spec in the spec personally in at least six months. Uh, the spec documentation. I think our focus right now is. Uh, getting enough enough uh, certificate handling to make sure that um, previously uh, with Citrine you pretty much had to use a self-signed certificate. We want to make sure that uh, you can choose a certificate authority. We want to make sure that uh, the security and identification portions are ready to go. Uh, we're aiming at basically the MVP, uh, exactly what's needed to handle plug-in charge and smart charging, and then moving forward we may we may move move beyond that, but that's the, uh, that's the focus at the moment. Yes? Uh, a similar question around everything to go up since they the whole release in July. Does that include all personal blocks to go Yeah, that's, that's my understanding. We want it to be fully, we want it to be fully compliant and uh, certified uh, by the OCA as fully compliant with all functional portions of OCPP 2.0.1 by the end of July. That's the goal. Oh, yes. How much Linux is how, how, Did you say how much Linux? Yes. Um, well, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to say. I mean, obviously, like, we use Linux-based tools, but it's built on, uh, it's built from the ground up in JavaScript and TypeScript. And as far as, uh, as far as dependencies go, I can't think of anything that's Linux specific about it. It's it, you know, it doesn't require. No, sorry, the OS, 
the, this may be a uh, this may be a sort of Bavarian versus U.S. Uh, thing, but the OS portion is just open source. It's not an operating system of its own. It's simply a CSMS system, and it can be deployed. Uh, that it's an open source energy uh, project is the is open source electrification project. That's the that's the main portion. It doesn't uh, it doesn't it can run on Linux. It can run on anything with the Unix kernel. It can it can run on Windows, um, wherever you want to uh, deploy it. So. Uh, JavaScript, yeah, some Java, but JavaScript mostly, yeah. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say there's um. Yeah, I wouldn't say there's any Linux. Uh, Python, um, regard. There are modules written for Citrine that were written in Python, but we did not we did not choose Python as our language. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, if there's no other questions, I just wanna say thanks one more time and appreciate it and would love to have conversations with anybody uh, when we get a chance. Thanks very much.